All right. Hi. Um, I'm going to be reviewing Our Planet with David Attenborough. Um, I've been watching seasons one and two uh, throughout the entire week. Um, I've seen them all many times before, but um, this is my first time kind of getting to review all these different episodes with more of the landscape ecology knowledge behind me. So that was really, really interesting. Um, so I'm not going to reflect on any one episode, but rather kind of the whole thing in general. So um, for starters, those landscape ecology themes that we've talked about, sea levels, ocean acidification, uh, shifting habitats, um, he covers all of them uh, often very, very thoroughly. Um, and, you know, I think the one he covers the least is probably the human health um, because he really is more focused on the ecology and the actual natural world. And there's there's some he throws in um, a little bit of the human health aspects of it, but he really does focus on more of the natural systems involved and how uh, these changing climates are um, are affecting them. Um, and same thing with species and uh, different specific habitats. I mean, he covers so, so many, and he does a really nice job, I think, uh, disentangling some of those kind of complex spatial temporal relationships. Um, one really cool one that I liked was uh, where dusts from the desert are kind of blown into the atmosphere and they settle in the ocean, which then kind of feeds plankton and other kinds of microscopic ocean organisms, which then supports the food web of the ocean, which supports the terrestrial food webs and such. Um, that's a very complex relationship, both spatially and temporally. And I just thought it was amazing how well he broke it down. Um, but I can't say he focuses on any one species or habitat. Um, I will say he tends to focus on, I guess, the more charismatic ones, your Siberian tigers, your polar bears, your flamingos. Um, not a whole lot of attention is given to like the less, I guess, kind of charismatic ones, which, you know, to tailor to a very broad audience, I guess you do want to keep it. Uh, on your kind of more well-known, exciting animals that you've heard of, you know, elephants, lions, all that. Um, was it compelling, accurate, and informative? Yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> um, it was absolutely compelling. You know, maybe I'm biased because I just I absolutely adore the David Attenborough documentaries, but they, they keep my attention for hours on end. You know, I could watch them all day, every day. Um, are they accurate? Absolutely. Um, you know, he doesn't really doesn't bring up a ton of statistics and uh i think that's a good thing you know when you start bringing in data and statistics i think um sometimes it can get a little more complex for people and in order to keep it again tailored to a broad audience leaving the numbers out sometimes is better and it's informative absolutely i mean i've seen both season one and two of our planet like a dozen times now of all the episodes and every single time I learned something new. So um, I would absolutely say it's informative. Um, the intended audience, you know, as I've been saying, um, it's super broad. You know, he, it's for everybody. That's the whole point of it. You know, it's on Netflix, it's on Disney. It's for everyone because, you know, I just think it's a plea at this point. You know, I, I just remember like old, old, David Attenborough documentaries um, were more kind of information-based, showing you the natural world in areas that you may not be aware of or from lenses that you didn't know were there. Um, and now it's more of a plea or like a really a stark warning as to like what is going to happen if we don't deal with this in the near future. Um, you know, but he does that from a very kind of hopeful perspective. And I love that because I do think that there is this, there's this really kind of dark doom and gloom view of climate change, especially um, from like wildlifers or environmental scientists who kind of, we, we more or less say like, it's not looking good, you know, and he acknowledges that, but um, he also he also presents all this information in a hopeful kind of way. 
uh, which I think is really important. Um, so that's a really long way of saying that this is for everyone. It's not for any one audience at all. Um, would I change anything about our planet? Um, what was missing? You know, I wouldn't dare <laughs> try to um, criticize really a, anything from these um, from these documentaries. Um, I do think that if the one thing that was missing um, was a lot of these kind of human health considerations for climate change, which is a really important part of the conversation. Um, and he touches on it a little bit again. Um, but, you know, he it was left out for the most part. And I do think that in order to get really everyone to care, you have to include kind of that, um, those human dimensions of climate change. Um, because some people just simply don't care that much about the environment, but they care about human health. Um, so again, that is just part of what I've been saying about, you know, keeping this the audience as broad as possible. That's the only thing I could possibly think to change. Um, so with that said, I would be remiss if I didn't give it a 10 out of 10. Again, maybe I'm biased because, you know, I... Just adore David Attenborough. I've been watching his documentary since I was a tiny, tiny child. Um, but I would give it a 10 out of 10. And um, yeah, I thought it was amazing, as always. So um, yeah, thanks for watching.